What's going on guys, it's your boy John for the Gamma here. Welcome you back to another Power Rankings video. Now, I apologize for this getting out like really late. I know games have already started today and like that's bad on my part. I should be making sure that these get out on time. I failed miserably, so I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and go into these Power Rankings. Honestly, this week was a little bit of an interesting week um, as far as, you know, teams going crazy, doing things that uh, you wouldn't think that they would. But the first and team that we can look at well the team that's been the most consistent in the league so far <laughs> the jets they got routed out by the colts and this colts team realistically they feasted on a jets team that just isn't very good hasn't done any good things this entire year they're zero and three for a reason and you know it happens that way sometimes and because of that it's just like okay like this team is just gonna settle down do nothing and they're probably they're probably looking to be in the top five draft pick this season. I'm thinking right right now they're the worst team. They look like the worst team, but we'll see as the season progresses how they're gonna do. Then we got New York, the other New York team. They also got routed by the 49ers. I think it was 30, yeah, 36 to nine. So both teams, both New York got outscored 72 to 16 last Sunday. That's just horrific. Uh, this 49ers team is banged up hardcore. And the fact that, you know, this team can still hang 36. And the defense is what's been messed up on their side of the field mainly. Um, and for the defense to only give up nine is just like, uh, oh, that's like a slap to the face if you're a New York fan. It's like, oh, we're just, yeah. Um, although I think that... If there's a candidate to get Trevor Lawrence right now, it is the Giants uh, with that number two pick um, at the current moment. I, you know, because you know Trevor Lawrence is a great quarterback. He might not be number one though, depending on the circumstances. Because I don't, I don't see the Jets getting rid of uh, Darnold anytime soon. Um, so it might be they darn it. You know, Trevor Lawrence might go to the Giants. The who knows? I mean. The terrible look of uh, their quarterback right now. I can't even remember his name. That's the, that's a problem. Daniel Jones. Yeah. Like, ugh. 179 yards. Terrible, terrible day. Um, so, that's kind of deserving at the spot that they're at. Next, we have the Broncos. I'm trying to look up their scores because I can't remember all the scores. They played the Buccaneers. They played the Brady's, um, as Joy calls them. Uh, I actually really love when she goes, I'm picking the Tampa Bay Brady's. Um yeah, this kind of turned out the exact way everyone thought it would. The Broncos could not put up anything as far as offense with their injuries on that side of the ball. Very, very big. Uh, and it's looming large on this season where, you know, if you didn't have the injuries you had, you might be closer in these games. So at this point, Number thirty, not you know, not a great season, but it's very, it's very much I think due to the injury ridding, ridding of this season. So, sorry, not like sorry, not sorry. I had to drop you down so far. I mean, you didn't get dropped down this week, but it just proved that my large drop of them last week was correct. So, unfortunately, next we have the Philadelphia Eagles, the first team to drop. They dropped three spots this week at number twenty nine. They do not look good you tie the Bengals okay think about that you tied a team that was really not that great so far they've looked they've had spurts of looking good but being at home you should never be on the side of a tie um and this is the second time I believe in the last four years um the Bengals have tied with an NFC East team obviously they only play the NFC East once every four years. So the fact that they've tied an NFC East team twice now, kind of crazy, um, to say the least. Uh, but yeah, they deserve the drop right there. I mean, Carson Wentz did not look good. There's some troubles brewing. He's got six interceptions throughout the first three weeks of the season. That is horrific. Um, I feel like Carson Wentz has... And this has kind of been my thing the entire way through with the Eagles. I A lot of people give me flack for thinking that Carson Wentz is overrated. And I've thought this the entirety of his career about how overrated he is and like uh, and all that stuff. And so the fact that, again, here he is proving the fact that he is overrated. Uh, and I believe 
he's in a isn't he in a contract year? He might not be. He I might be one year off, but um Carson, let me look this up because I believe he is in or like the fourth year in the league right now. So I believe this is his contract year went. Like I I do believe how long has he been in the league? Oh, he's been in the league a lot longer than I thought he was. Holy cannoli. Uh, oh, no, he joined the Philadelphia Eagles in 2016, which means this is his contract here. Let's go! I actually... So, that's actually exciting that I got that. So, in a contract year, you need to be better than what you're playing right now. And so, I don't think... I think that Carson Wentz is actually going to get replaced by Jalen Hurts next season. Honestly, um, at this point, the Eagles drafted him really high for a reason kind of tried to give a uh, push to Carson Wentz. The, the push has not been received well. So that's a drop. Next, we got Cincinnati. Cincinnati at 20, uh, 28, dropping one spot. Makes sense. I mean, they tied, but they did look like that kind of team that is better than they were last year, but also still has some issues and some holes to shore up with this division improving and this division actually looking like uh, one of the better divisions, I think, um, in my opinion, one of the best division in the AFC conference. Definitely got some work to do as a Bengals team. Uh, Want to see how they do against better opponents. Because, you know, tying the Eagles is not really like, oh, it's a win, but it's not a win, you know. So I want to see them play against better opponents. They got the Jags this week. Honestly, the Jags aren't the greatest of an opponent either. So I want to see kind of how the Jags play them after, you know, we'll talk about their collapse on Thursday night. But yeah, next we have the Chargers. They move down two spots. Again, I've been on the whole, I don't think the Chargers are very good, but a lot of people are putting them in the 19, like anywhere between like 16 and 22. And I'm like, I don't see that from the Chargers. I still have not seen that from the Chargers. Yes, they're a competitive team. But they can't find ways to win, and that is important. If you want to be able to be a good team or classified as a good team, you have to find ways to win. Herbert needs to find ways to win, honestly. Um, you know, because they have been in close games, and I'm not denying that factor, right? You know, I can't deny that they've been in close games. I mean, 21 to 16, uh, the game against the Chiefs, it was 23 to 20. Their defense is playing really well in a season that defenses are really getting hurt so their defense i'm really loving they've got sports on offense they just need to find conversions convert and they will look like a better team than i have them ranked uh so it'll be interesting to see kind of where they fall uh i hope that they do better i believe that herbert is a great quarterback and can do really good things he's already showing some spurts in his rookie year that are very impressive and this team will be a better team in the long run i can see it i can feel it i can sense it but at the moment they're where they are right now. They're, you are what your record is, they say. One and three, and honestly, not looking too hot. Next, we have the Carolina Panthers, who beat the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, no, they didn't. They beat them today, technically. Um, they beat. They were the ones that beat the Chargers. That was my bad. Ugh. As you can tell, I'm recording this after some of these games, so I'm super excited for the Panthers <laughs> to move them up, and I haven't done it yet, uh, obviously, because this is for week four. Uh, so, Panthers played well. They went against the Chargers, though. They didn't have any, like, pure good opponents of course they did now and you'll see them move up a lot but sneak peek for next week um but yeah they played really well they kind of kept the chargers in check defensively i'm excited for this defense teddy bridgewater is definitely a game manager quarterback so being a game manager quarterback is always nice to have um there's a reason why he did well with the saints and i think if you, you keep the panthers in some of these close tight-knit games you always will know that you have a chance uh, even with CMC out, they're they're almost playing more rowdy than they did before, and I'm excited to see kind of their progression. Uh, next, oh, this team is giving me migraines every freaking time they play. We have the Atlanta Falcons. They drop down five spots. You know what? I I said it. I'm gonna say it again. I had faith in this team, and I. Have now lost it. I don't think that they're going to be that great of a team. I think that they're going to do the same thing they did last year. They're going to go one and seven, and then end the season like six and ten for no apparent reason. Um, instead of going down, and getting a good draft pick, Matt Ryan's like thirty four. Matt Ryan, Ryan is one of the only, um, one of only five quarterbacks that uh, have been in the league uh, longer than I've been watching. 
I be, uh, I believe, unless he was drafted in 2008. No, he was drafted in 2008. My bad. Um, cause he was the rookie when I started watching football. Um, but he, and it's, you know, starting in 2008 is kind of a, you know, you're starting to get older. You're starting to like, cause that puts him at like 38, 39. So, you know, he's definitely getting older. I think it's time to get a good, a, like a better quarterback or, or not even a better quarterback. Cause Matt Ryan's a good quarterback. It's their defense that has been falling apart. Um, so they need to get better defensive players. I think in order to be better, obviously, cause yeah, Matt Ryan's playing out of his mind, but the, the problem is, is his team's losing. So he's not even in any of these conversations that I feel like he should be for having a great season. Next, we got the Miami Dolphins. I could, I could talk about that team all day, but they, I'm going to move on before I get angry with them. Uh, we got the Miami Dolphins at 24, moving up five spots after a gigantic Thursday night win over the team that had the biggest rise last week in the Jaguars. Um, yeah, they actually looked like a competitive team. They congealed, and that's awesome. I'm actually, like, I'm super excited because, you know, for the Dolphins... I want them to do good. I want them to be a better team than they have shown. I feel like they are a solid... If they continue playing like this, they're a solid 7-9 and nine team. And I believe they can be. I believe that they're going to be competitive in all their division games as they have shown before. I believe they can go 2-0 against the Jets. That's two free wins right there. Um, and I think if they can get three wins in this division, then you know that 3-3 three and three is going to transpire. That, that would put them at four wins right there. They'd have to get two or three more wins to be where I think they can be. And I believe that. I can see that happening this season. I feel like there are some solid losses that they are going to take. Um, but honestly, if they continue to play the way that they did last week, I will be ecstatic for this team to see where this goes. Um, I think that Brian Flores has transformed this young group of guys into competitive players. Like, And that's a testament to him as a coach. Yeah, of course, everybody's like, oh, Miami's just going to tank for, you know, the sake of taking. But, like, let's be fair. This was a team that had so many young pieces last season. And then they ended the season with, like, a, I want to say, like, a 5-4 and four record or whatever. Like, oh, my gosh, this team is, like, it's, like I said, super exciting. And I can't wait to see the, the development in these players. I believe that the Dolphins will begin to be a playoff team. Um, at, not this year, but next year I could see it. Um, so I'm excited. They got their franchise quarterback into a tango or tongue of Iloa. I can't wait. I hope they do well. I believe in them. Let's see if that happens. Next, we have Minnesota moving up a spot after their week where I believe they lost, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they did. They lost to the Titans 31 to 30. The Titans have been in close games all season long, right? And the fact that uh, the Titans, who are currently an undefeated team, you were able to keep in within one point. Just, I believe this team can actually play well. Um, I Like I said, I believe they're still fourth in the North. I truly believe talent-wise they are not. They are the worst team in the NFC North. They've shown it on multiple occasions. This is an AFC team that they don't play very often, so it's hard to kind of kind of look at these teams and be like, okay, this is a good team. Like, obviously, you know, the AFC, those games are really hard to kind of see, like, the strength. But the fact that you were keep, able to keep up with one of the premier teams in the AFC just puts you in a def, different spot. I only moved them up one, though, because they didn't show me enough. They didn't get the win. Um, so they're still winless on the season. So they need to get a win in order to kind of keep up where they are. But let's see what they can do uh, against the Texans next week. Speaking of, we have an AFC South team at number 22, the Jaguars being the biggest faller. They're back to where they started <laughs> very quickly. I I I overhyped them. I thought they were going to play well. I thought they were going to do well. And this is one of my many mistakes, I guess. I overhyped the Jaguars. They need to do better. They need to play better. They looked way better than I guess they are. Um, next, we've got the football team. Back at it again at 21. One of a few teams that have not moved at all this season. Uh, I believe that's one of three so far that we have that haven't moved all season. Kind of crazy to look at. Like, you know, if you're one of three teams that haven't moved, it means you're a stable franchise. So keep that stability up. I believe that, you know, the football team 
is another one of those teams, kind of like the Dolphins, where they're get, they're a younger football team. I think they can play better as the season progresses, and I would like to see that moving forward. This week's task is going to be pretty much impossible to win. It's against the Ravens, so especially after the Ravens did what they did last week. So Next, we got the Detroit Lions. They move up two spots. Uh, you know, Detroit got a win. They got a win against the Cardinals. So congratulations, Detroit. Uh, you got the upset. Uh, you played well. You didn't blow a lead. So hopefully this trend continues. Um, I kind of hope that it does because I feel like the Lions are so much better than they're playing right now. Like, if they don't blow leads, they would be in a much better spot, but they just can consistently blow leads. So I can't move them up too much because I feel like they're going to blow a lead at some point and be like, oh, by the way, we're back to the normal Lions. So I'm hoping that's not the case, but it probably will be. Uh, next, we got the Houston Texans at 19. They moved down a singular spot. Uh, they played the Pittsburgh Steelers and they kept up, kept it close. So hopefully the Texans will turn the corner next week as they go against the Vikings. But this will be a really a true test to see are the Texans trash or are they good? Let's hope that the Texans are a mediocre team at least. Um, I feel like they can be, but yeah, that's going to be one of our power moves of the week. Uh, I'll discuss those because I'll actually get a chance to do that. So that's awesome. So next we got the big, another big riser, the Cleveland Browns at plus five. They did it. They they got a win. They got the second one of the season. They haven't done that in a long time. Um, and they actually won considerably with a considerable margin at 20 to 34. That, I think, was definitely reason enough to move them up five spots. They played a lot better than a lot of these teams that are below them. Um, I really want to see this team continue that stride. They have an, another NFC East opponent, though. Um, but currently, they've got what everybody considers to be the best team in the East. So, and I put that in heavy quotation marks, by the way. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I feel like this, this team has a shot. Um, and yeah, like I said, the NFC East is going to be some, there's going to be some big games in that division. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to cap. I'm excited for that. Uh, next we got the Indianapolis Colts moving up two spots. Uh, oh, well, huh, you know what? Number 16 is again. Um, they move up two spots. You know, that's awesome for them. They played the Jets though. You know, you could be like, oh, why didn't you move them up, up more? And that's why. You know, that's that's two straight two and one teams that aren't in the top sixteen. Um, but again, I can't move you up if you play the Jets. I really can't. I you know, I moved you up a little bit because you played really well, but it's the Jets. Like, I couldn't move you past our first undefeated team, the Chicago Bears. I feel like they're a pretender. They are 100% that pretender team. I'm sorry, but you are. Like, you have played a total of three games. And I believe all three of those teams that you played. Oh, no, 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 because the um, they're one and nine in a combined record. One and nine. You cannot tell me that a, or excuse me, one and eight. You cannot tell me that if your combined record of like opponents is one and eight, you are a solid three and O team. Haven't shown me a good win. You're staying at a 16. I respect you as a team, but you need to play better in order for me to like move you up or do something. Um, next we have the San Francisco 49ers at two and one. Again, a lot of injuries, lots of problems. They move down a spot and a lot of people are gonna be like, what the heck? Why are you moving them down a spot? Just teams next to them played better. Injuries are going to be, uh, like, they're just going to be hurting. They're hurting. They really are. Um, we'll see against the Eagles. If they beat the Eagles, I think they just prove that they're a much better team than I'm giving them credit for. Again, you know, because a lot of people are going to be like, well, you're a Seahawks fan, so you're your biggest rival, so of course you're going to knock them down and underrate them. True. <laughs> um, I'm saying true only because right now I do feel like they're underrated. Um. Like, I want to move them up super badly. And I'm hoping I get an opportunity to move them up next week because I feel like they're way better than 15. I feel like they're more in, like, the 12 to 11. But these top teams, they're so hard to rank. These top 16, it, like, it's frustrating to try and rank them and figure it out. Um, I'm not even going to lie. I'm just, like, I, I keep doing the, oh, should I flip them here? Should I do this? Or should I, what should I do? Like, it's so ridiculous. But it's awesome. 
when teams are competitive like this, even when they're injured in the best division in the NFL at this point. I'm super excited to see kind of how they progress and what they do. We got the Oakland Raiders in the next spot. They are down two after they had a loss to the Patriots. They got hit hard. They got smacked in the face. And this is what we were expecting. <laughs> like, again, they were like, oh, this is going to be an amazing football game. I, I figured it was going to be great to watch. But, yeah, getting smacked in the face, 16-point loss, it just proves that they're that like a cusping team. And what I mean by that is a team that could play well and could do well over the course of the season. But if they make the playoffs, they'll probably be the six or the seven seed. Um, and that's kind of my humble opinion. That's kind of where I feel like this team is a six or a seven seed. They're definitely not going to win their division. I don't think they're good enough to be the five seed. So we'll kind of play it by ear on that. Next we got Dallas. Dallas moved up two spots despite losing. They played the Seahawks very well. Another one that came down to the last drive. Lots of games are like that. But, you know, when you have the 49ers, they moved down only because Dallas moved up too. That's literally the only reason they moved down. Um, and just I feel like Dallas played better than the 49ers would against the Seahawks, to be honest. Um, especially with their injury-riddled team. Yeah, they're one and two, right? But I mean, they're keeping they're keeping in games, and if you keep in games the way that they're doing, like they're bound to win some, right? Like, I'm hoping. I mean, Dak Prescott threw for 472 yards, and uh, but Ezekiel Elliott a lot. Like, I feel like the Cowboys played so well to lose that game. It just proves how good the Seattle Seahawks are. But like. Also, the Seahawks could have easily lost this game. They could have collapsed very quickly. But this defense is a, a problem, a problem child. Um, and I, they're giving up the most points in the NFL, in my opinion, I feel like, this season. I feel like this defense is going to be the thing that holds them back. And we'll see what happens with this defense against a very high-powered Browns offense. Um, I'm interested to see what this game goes to. Next, we got Tennessee. I think they move up this week. Yeah, they move up two spots. Um... Tennessee's just a a, a win-close-games kind of team. I believe they're kind of like the Seahawks of last year. I believe that they could easily be 11-5, and 12-4, and four, but only ha and like have 10 of those wins in close-game situations. So against some of these high-powered teams like the Ravens and the high offenses, they're not, I don't think they're going to do well. I honestly think those are the games that they're going to lose. But against a lot of these... Like, uh, if you're, like, a mid-tier defense or a mid-tier offense, watch out for this team. Like, anywhere between, like, eight, if you're eight, seventh and below, watch out. This team is going to keep up with you. They show a lot of resilience, and I'm hoping this resilience leads to a lot of good games. I feel like it will. Um, I just am scared that they keep it close because if they could falter very easily. One mistake could drop them heavily in the rankings and everything else, so... I'm hoping they play well, but again, they kind of need to if they continue their streak. We got Tampa Bay at 11. You play a battered and bruised Broncos team. You take care of business. You stay where you are. Like, you you did exactly what you needed to do. There's none of the teams above, like, but a lot of the teams above you did the same. So, it's kind of hard to move you up. Uh, then we have the Los Angeles Rams. They took care of business as well. They actually really they or well I they didn't they lost never mind <laughs> they did not take care of business they lost thirty two to thirty five but a lot of people will say that they lost on a blown pi call you can't let it come down to the one play la you're staying here right now because you kept up with the bills but you can't let it come down to one play of course as a as a talks fan I'm like yes knock down la but like. Also, I want them to win fair and square. If they're winning, let them win fair and square. Like, the pass interference call is never fun to lose on. So, sorry, Rams fans, that that ever that happened to you. It would be nice to have a freaking solid 3-0 division. Um, but, you know, after that loss, it just, yeah. Not not a great timing to have a PI call. Um, so, sorry, Rams fans. Then we got Arizona, who also took a hit last week. They, although, contrary to the Rams... The Arizona Cardinals dropped two spots because Arizona lost to the Lions. It, your opponents matter. Who you play matters. This would have been an easy win, but Kyler Murray looked really bad. Three interceptions, 
Not good at all. I mean, yeah, you got two touchdowns, but a terrible 73-some-odd passer rating. Like, if you continue to, like, to play like this, you're going to start dropping games. This is, an, this is the NFL we're talking about. You can't throw three interceptions and expect to win a game. So, against Carolina this week, they do have a an overmatch. Uh, so, maybe they'll be able to kind of take care of business and get a win. But, um, will Arizona start faltering? Or Because, again, this division is tough. You can't lose these games. And, in, like, the Rams could easily be 3-1 and one next week. You guys could be 3-1 and one next week. The entire division could have three wins by the end of the next week. You never know. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen. Uh, but it's a possibility you got to be careful of that because that if that happens, then you're in trouble as a, uh, you know, you want to make the playoffs, you have to win these kind of games. Next, we have the Saints. They drop two spots as well. They, oh, <clears throat> going against the Packers team, you kind of expected them to get a lot of points um, scored on them. But Drew Brees, just the underneath stuff is just not what you want to see him doing. Like, like uh, your wide receiver core being banged up the way it is, you can tell he's hesitant. You can tell he doesn't want to do specific things. You can tell he's getting older. And when you can tell you, uh, your quarterback is getting older, that's scary. Um, I still believe they're a really good team. I believe they're, like, in this top 10 conversation. But I do believe that they have some work to do. They need to look better than they have looked previously. Um so we'll kind of see as the season progresses where they're going to be. But if they lose next week, they're definitely not going to be a top 10 team. I'm really risking it here, keeping them in the top 10. But I just, I can't see this Saints ball club not being a top 10 team. It's just a very rocky start of the season. Next, we got New England moving up two spots. Congratulations to the Patriots getting a big win against the Raiders, a 2-0 ball club. Now the 2-1 and uh, the Patriots are. And... They got a big win, a massive win, and they definitely looked way better than the Cardinals and Saints this week. They played lights out football, um, and they deserve to be at the top seven. I believe they can continue to play well, do better, uh, and see what they do. Uh, next, we got Buffalo. Buffalo gets a plus two advantage again. Uh, so they're back to where they were um, after, you know, looking kind of sketch against the Miami Dolphins. Um, I, like I said, I didn't drop them too much due to the fact that it was a divisional matchup and they got the win. They found the way to win. But yeah, when, it, when you're, when you look sketch against the Dolphins, that's bad. Um, and not what you want to see, but again, they're continuing to win games. Uh, again, another one where it's like, ah, that was kind of a sketch win, but, um, like, that's why I'm keeping them up. I feel like they're better than the Patriots, but also, you know, definitely another, what we would call a sketch win and, we want. I want to see them dominate a team. We haven't seen that much this season, so I want to see them dominate a team. If they can dominate one of these good teams, then they definitely will show being in this top ten com or top five conversation. Uh, at number five, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers, three and zero. Oh, they oh, oops, I thought they moved up three and zero. Oh, um, at number five, they're definitely playing extremely well. Their defense is really amazing, and I can't wait to see the development of this defense. I want to see. Hopefully, they do well. Unfortunately, their game is postponed until week seven, so this is their bye week. So it's gonna be weird. Um, with the bye and everything else, I don't like moving teams on their bye week, but it might happen. Um, you never know. Awesome. Um. Then we got Seattle. Of course, Seattle is number four. We saw that already. They just played really well. They played that south. They played exactly how they wanted to play against this team. The let Russ cook is just it's just it's happening, right? It and you know, it's a weird thing to see, but I'm excited to see it. If our offense can continue to play the way that they do, um, like and score thirty points a game, I feel like our defense can like withstand that. Um still worried about our defense though. Um giving up a lot of yards. Rank 32nd in the league in pass yards, but rank second in rushing yards. So I'm hoping that we can control the pass a little bit more, but we crossing my fingers. Jamal Adams out. We got a lot of injuries. We need to keep this, like, keep the streak going, but it'll be a scary one against Miami. Uh, then we got Baltimore going down a spot. I actually originally didn't have them going down a spot, but the Patriots played way, or the Patriots, the Packers played way too well not to get the spot. Um, honestly, I feel like these teams are just so close together. I could talk about them all at once. Like, they're way too close. They're, these are the top three teams in the league. Bar none. Best three in the league. You can't even tell me otherwise. Um, so I'll be excited to kind of 
see what happens and see how this team plays, what this team does in reactions. Um, but yeah, there's no way these three teams are not the top three teams in the league. Um, teams have to show me otherwise. Um, but again, so we got to look at, we got to talk about the powers, uh, power moves in week four. Of course, a lot of games have already happened and I just feel bad for not, you know, recording this earlier, but, uh, power moves in week four. We've got, um, my, my power moves for week four, um, pre these games happening would have been bears and Cowboys. And like I said before, um, it was the, not the Jags, it was the Vikings and Texans. And then the other one would have been, um, well, those would have been my two. I feel like that's probably the two that I would have had to be honest. I'm going to be keep it, keeping it real, keeping it honest. Those would be the two that I would have had as my power moves. And then of course, Colts and Bears would have been the other one. Um, so those are my power moves games of the week, uh, games where a lot of teams could falter and move. Um, we'll see kind of what happens in the week. Um, sorry for, like I said, sorry for getting this out late. I'm going to like apologize 8,000 times, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, and we'll see you in the next week for our power rankings. Hopefully I can get this out. I should be able to get this out Wednesday. So, uh, not this video, but next week's video up Wednesday. So hope you guys have a wonderful day. Love you all. Peace.